Rabbitohs Radio Podcast, the number one source for everything South Sydney Rabbitohs. Mate, what's going, buddy? Nothing much, mate. Nothing much. Can you get into some Rabbitohs chat? We've got a big game on our hands on Friday. Yeah, it's coming coming thick and fast. It's only uh, 24 hours away. We're recording here on a Thursday evening. The matchups are looking pretty good. Uh, I think Brisbane are still favourite, but looks like there's, there's a couple of outs, mate. Talk us through those outs. Uh, yeah, look, definitely a few outs. Obviously, you broke uh, on the podcast the other day, and it's been confirmed that Corey Oates is set to miss out there on the wing. Josiah Carapani is the guy that looks like uh, is set to come in there. Keep an eye on, though, on number 20, Israel Leota has had some great success in reserve grade as well, and he might get his opportunity uh, to come back in, uh, to come into the side as well for his NRL debut. So two guys uh, definitely to keep an eye on there. The famous name there at the Broncos, there, Israel. Israel Folau popping up there and then played some pretty good footy there coming out of the Melbourne Storm. What a freak athlete. Um, a Campbelltown product there who done all sorts of things. I um, mean, rugby union, AFL, rugby league. We kind of forget about Israel Folau, don't we? But what a special, special athlete that bloke was. Yeah, totally. He was an absolute freak. I remember uh, in my younger days as well, um, just watching him absolutely tear up. Uh, for Melbourne as well, he was just an absolute freak of nature. He's pretty special. Um, look on the on the Rabbitohs side, I was down at the captain's run today. Uh, Big Les and they 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 went through their paces. It all looked pretty good. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to run out one to seventeen tomorrow night. Um, that'll be confirmed a little bit later on. I think when they put out their nineteen man squad, I don't think there'll be any changes there. But I guess form wise, coming into it, South Sydney come in. With their tails up, there's a couple of wins on the trot, uh, one against Parramatta, but a real impressive win on the road against the Gold Coast last week. Yeah, massive win and obviously some great individual performances as well. We sort of touched on it on the podcast in the review. Keon Coloma, Tungy, Latrell Mitchell, Cody Walker, uh, the standouts in that one. Looking for them to all have a big one uh, in this game, but I think we're going to be keeping our eye on the forward battle, aren't we? Oh, for sure. Um, we, we've already spoken about the middles. Um, generally, game games are won and won and lost in the middle, but a lot of points these days in the NRL is teams are trying to set up edges and try and find weaknesses and stuff like that. So we might have a look at the edge matchups there. Michael Cheekham, Jai Arrow, and obviously our centre pairing of Richie Kenner and uh, Tane Mill will be going up against, Look, looking at the Brisbane Broncos, uh, Brendan Piacora, Jordan, Jordan, Ricky, very strong edge players, and and then you got the experienced. Um, these we well, call them experienced, even though they're young fellas. Selwyn Cobbo and Katoni Stang, Stags are uh, pretty tasty matchups there, mate. Yeah, very tasty matchups. I think defensively, it is going to be the main focus uh, for these outside backs and these edge forwards. Defensively, um, you want to be sound. You want to be on, switched on against Selwyn Cobbo, Tony Staggs, Brennan Piacora, Jordan Ricky, these sort of guys. You know that Jordan Ricky is going to be switched on defensively. Obviously, has had some great uh, games, more so defensively, making 35 to 40 tucks per game this season. Uh, you know, Brennan Piacora is an absolute wrecking ball on that left edge. Looking for him to have a big game as well. But uh, in saying that, you want Jai Arrow, who you know is going to be switched on, uh, you know, ready to go in defense. Michael Cheekham, the same. Uh, Tane Milne and Richie Kenner are going to be a real test for them. And um, look, I don't know if much of our traffic is going to be going to the edges. I know that last week we had a really good game plan, uh, which was to spread to the edges, but that was very suited to what was a very weak left edge defense of the Gold Coast Titans. Uh, this edge defense for the Broncos, it is switched on. So I think that we are going to have to try and really dig deep in the middles. And uh, that's where we're going to get the chocolates. That's where we're going to get the momentum, hopefully in that middle battle. Well, look, speed-wise, it's, it's probably a mismatch when you look at both teams from 1 to 17. But if South Sydney are going to beat um, the Brisbane Broncos, we're going to have to go straight down Main Street. We're going to have to go straight through this, my big Les. Mm. And it all starts there with, with, with the bookends there of Davey Mawale, and Sean Kepi are starting to build that little that starting rotation. I like the look of that. Um, we've already spoken a lot about Keon, but you, I, I can't stop um, talking about big Keon. He has been outstanding when you think about um, Tassie. They've hardly had a forward go back-to-back um, weeks with 200-plus metres. He's had a couple in the last few weeks, and and that's for exactly where it's going to be one one and loss. And that's the platform that needs to be laid for your halves, like your, your Jack White and your Cody Walkers and Latrell Mitchells and obviously Damian Cook out of dummy half. It's not a bad spine when you when you read those guys out. 
Mm, exactly. Um, the spine definitely needs to be switched on. Uh, look, you mentioned Davey Mawale and Keon Kalom Matungi. It's going to be interesting to see Keon's role in this game. Obviously, with Cam Murray coming back into the side, you don't know if Keon's going to go back to that left edge, how many minutes Keon, Michael Cheekham, these sort of guys are going to get. But Davey Mawale, uh, if he plays a similar role to what he's been playing over the past few weeks, I'm looking for him to have a real big game. We've, had, we've seen him against some lower tier front row forward packs. Uh, this is going to be a big test for him. Going up against some origin forwards in Payne Haas, Patrick Carrigan through the middle there. Uh, looking for him to have a huge game. And if he does get around the 40, 45 minute mark, uh, it is going to be a test to see how long he can stand around uh, these sort of guys and uh, really lay a platform. And looking forward, definitely looking forward to that matchup. But we haven't even mentioned um, probably the best forward in the game, the best small forward in the game, um, Cameron Murray coming into the squad. Liver heavily drops out from last week's big win over the Titans. But what a big in that is when you when you drop Liver out and bring him in. It only strengthens um, the South Sydney lineup. Well, you were talking the other day about watching him at training, looking like uh, he's fit, ready to go, looking to the best that he's uh, been in a while as well, obviously since the injury. Um, talk to us a bit about that, how he's been looking at training today. Uh, he's been looking fit, fast. He just looks um, rejuvenated, I guess. You know, you know, he does a lot of defensive work um, with the South Sydney team and had to do a fair bit coming into the season when we we're on the back foot there. And and he's not the sort of bloke who's going to shirk his responsibilities. He's going to he's going to generally be in the top one or two um, tackle counts for the South Sydney Rabbitohs and has done so for she's up nearly nearly seven or eight years now. So that starts to wear you out to a guy like Cam with a young baby, been able to freshen up there. Um, Fix up that hip, flex up, uh, mate. He's going to be, and he's also going to be trying to get the attention of the New South Wales selectors there, Big Les. You think um, that will come into calculations? He's he's an outstanding footballer. I'll tell you one stat about Cam Murray against Brisbane Broncos. Now, you can either, in a gambling sense, how many tries do you reckon he scored against Brisbane? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, been playing um, for a long time. Yeah, he's been playing for a long time. I'm going to say fifteen. Well, zero, mate. He's never scored a try against Brisbane Broncos. So I'm going to go for the juices oh. theory. Maybe, maybe he's due to score a try against Brisbane. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. That's I didn't know that, but there you go. That's a fair stat there. Um, So Cam Murray, um, maybe due for a try, coming off the bench, some tied fours, 25-minute mark. Um, big guys like Fletcher Baker will be on the field by then. Uh, Marty Tapao off the bench, possibly. Um, Who knows, mate? Um, He might be able to open this, this mob right up down the middle of the field. Well, it's going to be a depending big on time. depending on what role we don't we still don't know what role he's going to play either. He, he might jump out on, on the edge, yeah, and, uh, and bring it, Cheekham off or something. It will be interesting to see where he does come into the game. But regardless, I think it is a big game. If you're talking about Origin, uh, obviously Madge has come out today and and expressed that he will be looking at Cam Murray. Uh, you know when the selection process does happen, uh, it's going to be a real interesting one because we sort of spoke about when we were review- when we were reviewing uh, State of Origin Game One. We were sort of talking about. Uh, how they didn't really have too much go forward from some of those smaller guys like Cam McInnes and Hudson Young. I feel like Cam Murray could come straight in, whether that be off the bench or starting uh, in that lock forward role and really make an impact through the middle. Uh, Yeah, I wouldn't push past it. And especially if he is looking really good um, coming back from his hip flexor injury and depending on his fitness, how many minutes he gets, um, you know, coming back into this side, you got to remember he has been out for a little while. He's been out for a few weeks. So, uh, just watching fitness, where he comes onto the field, how long he plays. Uh, you know, if he does go quite well and plays decent minutes, whether that be on the edge or in the middle, I think Madge will have a little think about should Cam Murray come into this side for a Cam McInnes, for a Hudson Young. I think there's a big possibility we see him there, but we will have to wait and see how he comes back. It is going to be a huge game for South Sydney Rabbitohs and New South Wales Blues fans. I think um, if he comes out of this game looking pretty good, I'm going to be the first one picked, to be honest. I think he starts at number 13, straight into the side. He's one of the most important rep players we've got. Think about the form that he's showed when he puts on the green and gold jersey or the blues jersey in the last five or six years. He's been unbelievable. I think he's not even a question whether he gets picked. If he's injured in this game, it's obviously a pressure mark. He, he walks into that blues 17, no dramas. Possibly mm. even in the starting lineup, big guys. I really think um, he's a big key to victory down there in Melbourne. But we're going back to this game. I'm really looking forward to the two small forwards getting on the fields. Um, Palace Duncan, who's a fan favourite. Mm. He's, he's not about. He's not about looking for. And Cam Murray, they're big fan favourites for the girls. Um, 
big less. Maybe a bit like you on the podcast. I can't imagine me being a fan favourite of the girls. But um, I'll tell, us Duncan, <laughs> tell us, Duncan. Tell us, Duncan. And Cam Murray, mate, on the field at the same time, they're going to cause havoc if the big men are out there and looking a little bit fatigued, like your Xavier Wilsons and all those sort of blokes. And that's something that I've talked about on the podcast quite a bit. The smaller, more mobile forwards are becoming more and more evident in our game. Um, you look at Ruben Cotter, for example, Kurt Mann at the Bulldogs, um, you know, Bailey Haywood, the way that they're using him at the Dogs as well. Uh, you know, you go to the Gold Coast Titans, guys like Aaron Clark, these sort of operators, the smaller mobile, really good ball handling forwards. Uh, they're becoming more and more dominant in our game, more and more uh, frequent in our game. And there's, you know, more and more of them popping up. There's utilities. Dylan Walker is a guy we haven't even touched on there in that conversation. Ex Rabido himself uh, that has, you know, grown into that role as well. So uh, these guys, depending on where they come on, does Talis Duncan's role change with Cam Murray coming back into the team? Uh, who goes on in the middle? Who goes on? On an edge, I would not, wouldn't shock me in the slightest if both of these guys come on in the middle of the field around the 20, 25 minute mark and they just cause havoc through the middle of the uh, field, just fast legs, offloading, uh, you know, second phase, Cody Walker, Latron Mitchell, they will throw at the mouth of that type of stuff. And, uh, it, you know, we could really uh, cause havoc around some tired forwards. But then again, Payne Haas, Patrick Carrigan, when are they ever tired? It's going to be uh, a bit of a hard one there. Uh, but look, I am very keen to see what their role is. I wouldn't be shocked either if Keon plays the full game in the middle still and Cam Murray comes on just in the front row in that sort of role as just a fast-legged front rower with a bit of ball-playing skills uh, and Keon plays the full game out. Wouldn't shock me in the slightest. Yeah, well, we've seen, obviously, uh, Cheeks play the full 80 minutes. I don't know if he's going to play the 80 minutes this week. I reckon Cam will sit on an edge at some stage because by the time Cam gets on at the 25 minute mark, I expect him to play the game out. You know, he'll, he'll get, you know, 50 odd minutes out, 55 odd minutes out of this contest. You, you'd think so, you know. This is one of the. Look, you talk about South's best players, you've got to think Latrell Mitchell comes to mind, Cody Walker and Cam Murray. They're the three best players of the Mighty Rabbits. You need them on the field the entire game. Obviously, it's not going to happen this week with Cam because he's going to start off the bench. But as soon as he gets on, you, you want them three players on for the final 50-odd minutes of the game or 60 to try and get us home. Well, look, and in saying that, though, if Cam Murray goes out there, uh, it is a tough game through the forwards. Brisbane, if they get a bit of a roll on through the middle of the park as well, and the, the roll doesn't work of Cam Murray coming in through the middle, Tullis Duncan through the middle, Cam Murray sits on an edge for a while and it still isn't working. I'm probably not sure I'd risk having Cam Murray out there for the full game. If we're under the pump, which I don't think we will be for very long, because I think that it will work, the Talis Duncan Cam Murray through the middle tactic. But if we are a little bit under the pump, you know, we've got Xavier Willison, who we haven't even talked about in this forward uh, battle as well. Kobe Hetherington is very underrated in this forward pack. He's got great footwork at the line uh, and a great offload, playing a lot of years at hooker in the lower grades as well. The ball handling is super crisp from him. Um, and Gajewski as well. He's a bit of an operator there, whether he goes into, onto an edge or through the middle, he'll do a job as well. Um, you know, if we are under the pump, I probably wouldn't play Cam Murray any more than around 40, 45 minutes. And it depends on his, one, his fitness, which we spoke about as well. And two, uh, the injury as well. How is he coming back into this uh, into this game and how is he feeling uh, out there after a few minutes of being out there? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you're not playing a small forward pack down the middle of the field. They're, they're pretty much the best. Uh, no one tests you more than Payne Huss on back-to-back plays and effort plays and uh, and also Patrick Carrigan. Hmm. Come all day. Um, look, we might get to a couple of tips here. We'll get an anytime try scorer and, and how you think this game's going to go and maybe throw a little same game multi in. Well, look, I've got a same game multi that I chuck up on my page for every single game. I've got one here for the Rabbitohs and Broncos game. I am going to go for the underdogs here in our South Sydney Rabbitohs. I think they keep this momentum going. I think they do get the job done. So you take Rabbitohs head to head here uh, against the Broncos. I have got Alex Johnston to score a try and I've got Tristan Saylor to go over. I think if they get a lot of momentum, Tristan Saylor is going to play a very similar role. Uh, to Reese Walsh. And I think Tristan Saylor is very likely of going over the trial line because he is just so good in support play uh, and can make a lot of things happen. We've seen it in big games, him and Ezra Mam, uh, when Reese Walsh has been out, have had some big performances. So looking for Tristan Saylor to make a bit of a difference there for the Broncos as well. AJ, 
Tristan Saylor, Rabbitohs to beat the Broncos. I'm doing this on Neds. If you put it on Neds, it's twelve dollars ten. So some great value uh, for you okay. if you stuck it on uh, any other platform of your choosing. Not too bad, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in um well my my, my anytime price, but I'm gonna take Tane Mill. Scored three tries out of five games for the Broncos. There, uh, I think they're gonna gonna be a little bit more left side heavy this week. I know we were right side dominant last week. Um, I'm going to throw in as my anytime try scorer, Tane Milne, the veteran center himself there. And and then on the same game, multi side of things, if I threw out three names of Alex Johnson, Katie Walker, and Latrell Mitchell, who do you reckon scored the most tries against Brisbane in the host out of those three? I think Latrell. Now, well, Latrell's played the least amount of games, played 60, 168 games. I think the other one's played 202, Cody, and then. And AJ's played 200 and 220 odd, I think it is. Mm. No, no one, mate. The answer is nobody. They're all they've all scored seven tries against the Broncos. So if you look at that, I'm, I'm going to turn around and put Latrell Mitchell into into my same game. I'll do Latrell Mitchell to score a try. Cody Walker. I'm going to leave AJ out of this one, mm. and I'm going to throw in my uh, my Brisbane try score is Dean Mariner. That speedster out in the wing. Um, obviously, speed speed can worry the, the, the Rabbitohs at the moment. We turn we only have to go back to all, uh, sorry seven days to have a look at um, Lofty Camperer. That speed out wide really worried us. He's going to be on the same side of the field as what uh, Lofty Cam was. Um, that's that's me. Three try scorers. I'm going to say Latrell Mitchell, um, Tane Mion, and Cody Walker for the Rabbitohs, and Dean Mariner. And the Rabbitohs have a win there, mate. That's mine. Same game multi, get on anyway. Any any agency at one, I don't care. We, we're not sponsored by anyone here, but yeah, jump on that one. And yeah, the Bunnies to win this one, I think. Yeah, look, I agree. I think that uh, the Rabbitohs, they're on a bit of a hot streak at the yeah. moment. I'm keen to see them uh, keep it going over the next few weeks, hopefully. Yeah, for sure. Uh, apologies, yeah. Brownie's um, working at the moment. He's on the dreaded old night shift. So hopefully you get through your shift there, Brownie. It's going to be nice and cold out down there at if you will, Port Botany. But this weekend, we've got a pretty exciting um, event coming up on Saturday for the 10-year reunion for the Rabbitohs uh, for the former Players Association. Can't wait for that one. And just a quick one before we go, tomorrow night, if you want to get out, if you're a member of the Rabbitohs, you can come up to the Northwest Corner post-match function. I'll be hosting that. And it looks like I'm going to have um, Jai Gray up on stage. You can ask him a few questions. You get a photo of him. And also... Um, Dean Hawkins, the, the halfback for the Rabbitohs, who's, who's had a pretty decent career at the Mighty Bunnies. So, big Dino, enjoy great if you want to get up to that post match function. Unreal, mate. Sounds fun. Can't wait for this game. Big test for some of our boys. And up the Mighty Rabbitohs, mate. Is that, that's about it for another edition of Rabbitohs Radio Podcast. Up the Rabbitohs, big Les. Up the Rabbitohs.